Well, this past Wednesday, I was working from home in the morning. I had an 11 o'clock meeting, so I was working on my sermon from home. And I thought it was quite appropriate that I had just received the latest edition of Christianity Today, which basically the title of the magazine and the feature article was called How to Define Heresy. And the reason I say it is appropriately titled is because of where we're at in the Route 66 study is we're in the 65th book of the Bible, which is the Epistle of Jude today. And this morning as we look at the Epistle of Jude, we're looking at a message entitled Contending for the Faith. And the reason I have titled this morning sermon Contending for the Faith is because that is what the book of Jude is all about. It is about an exhortation that Jude receives from God to give to you and to me to be contenders of the faith. And so Wednesday, as I said, I, I'm in my home office and I'm working on my sermon and, and I'm reading this article uh, just to see what it has to say about heresy. And as I'm reading through this article, the doorbell rings. And wouldn't you know who's at my door? Two Jehovah Witnesses. And so I go and I answer the door and I say hello and they say hi. It's two young ladies, uh, the main speaker, the expert of the two is Veronica. The other one is a, a young girl who's 19 and she looked more uncomfortable than any human being I've ever seen in my life. And I knew right away that she's just fulfilling a religious obligation by being at the door because she wouldn't make eye contact. She just looked like this was the last place in the world that she wanted to be. And so... Veronica, a nice young um, gal, starts talking, starts saying, hey, yeah, we're just coming around the neighborhood. We wanted to hand you the watchtower here. It's a magazine we put off, and this feature article here is about prayer. What do you think about prayer? And talking about that. And it also talks about the kingdom. And I said, listen, Veronica, I said, you know, I've had a, a lot of conversations with Jehovah Witnesses over the years, and every time you guys come to my door, you always want to talk about the kingdom. And I've got to tell you, the only thing I'm interested in talking about with you is the king of that kingdom. I could care less about that kingdom if we're not talking about the king. And so if you want to keep the subject on Jesus, I would love to talk to you guys. She said, sure. And I said, well, the first thing that I want you to know is that in talking to Jehovah Witness over the years, I also know that you believe in a different Jesus than, than I believe in. And you know, 2 Corinthians 11.3 warns us, to never be deceived and be taken away from the simplicity that is in Jesus. And I know that you guys believe that Jesus is Michael the archangel. Uh-huh, yeah. And they said, well, that's in complete contradiction to what the Bible says. Have you ever read Hebrews chapter 1? Yes, I have. Well, then you know in Hebrews chapter 1 that the Bible clearly tells us that Jesus is much better than the angels. And in fact, the angels worship him. And so you're here today and you're telling me that Jesus is the archangel. You just agreed that's a doctrine you believe in. I am telling you that that is in complete contradiction to what the word of God says. Don't you find that being problematic? Well, 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 well. She tries to take me on a rabbit trail. And I said, listen, I got back into the word of God. And as we're talking about Jesus some more, she says, you know, she says, yes, I love the early church. And that's the doctrine that we're believing in, and I'm thinking, wow, Lord, thank you for bringing Christianity Today to my doorstep this morning so that I could just get a refresher on heresy and on all this stuff because I said, yeah, you know, uh, when the early church uh, was exploding and the Bible was written, you know, the Bible wasn't put together in a book like what you're holding right there that's completely corrupt, but I wouldn't, didn't say that to her. But the Bible was actually 66 different books. And I said, the reason we have the 66 books of the Bible in one book now is because of heresy and heretics. In fact, did you know the first heresy that really ever faced the church? It was a man named Marcion. And his heresy is now called Marcionism. And what that heresy was about is that Marcion, he, he could not see the God of the Old Testament as the same God as the New Testament. He thought he was a legalistic, vengeful, wrathful God. And then he looks at Jesus in the New Testament and he says, those two don't add up. And so the God of the Old Testament is, is wrong. And so what he basically did is he cut out the Old Testament from his faith and he also took all of the New Testament passages and verses and, that had to do with the Old Testament and he basically cut them out and rewrote his own Bible. And I said, listen, I said, Veronica, the early church saw that and they said, stop. You're wrong. 
That is not the true faith. They took a stand. And she's getting engaged because this girl was very well versed in heresy, but nonetheless, she's very well versed. She knew her stuff. And I say not after that, there was a uh, Sibelianism. And what that taught is that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit were not distinct, not three distinct individuals that comprised the Trinity, but what they were was one, they were one God that appeared in three different forms. And the early church, the early church stopped. They, they, they said, stop it. That's wrong. That's heresy. There's three distinct persons in the Godhead. And that's what we call the Trinity now. And then I said, but the worst of all, the worst heresy that has ever hit the church, Veronica, was known as Arianism. And I'm telling you, this girl's getting excited because we're having a good dialogue. And I know I sound confrontational, but just the way it was working, we're like, we're BFFs right now. And... Seriously, and she even came back. I, she said, can I come back? Yeah, she actually came back Saturday. You can hear that conversation later. And so, um, and so I said, the worst heresy ever is Arianism. Whoa, I, I don't know a lot about that. Well, it happened in the fourth century, and it lasted about 50 years. It was so bad that these heretics that were a form of Arianism, they literally persecuted the pastors and the followers of Orthodox Christianity. No, yeah, totally, even cut their limbs off. They went to the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD looking like they had just been through a bloody war. It was horrible. She says, yeah. I'm like, you want to know what they taught? This is what they did. They went around the streets proclaiming this mantra. There was a time when the sun was not. There was a time when the sun was not. That was their mantra. Yeah, yeah. So, Veronica, what they're saying is there was a time when Jesus had a birthday. There was a time when Jesus was created. And she changes her whole countenance because she realizes what I just shared with her. I just shared with her that the religious organization, the cult, the heretical cult known as Jehovah Witness believed the same doctrine of Arianism. And I said, Veronica, I said, the early church, when this came out, when they said, no, Jesus was created, the early church took a stand and they said, stop. And go no further. That is heresy. That is wrong. It's unacceptable. It actually changes the identity and the nature of Jesus Christ. It takes him from being the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings and makes him a common man, a God, a created being, higher than the angels but not equal to God. And I said, Veronica, I said, I said, when you look at the New Testament, and you see, Paul says, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord in Philippians 2.11. And then you look at 2 Corinthians 12.3 and it says that nobody can call Jesus Lord except by the Holy Spirit. That word Lord is kurios. Yeah, so? Well, why that's a big deal, Veronica, is because in the Old Testament, when they took the Hebrew Scriptures and they transliterated the Hebrew Scriptures and the word Jehovah, into the Greek Septuagint. The word that they chose to use is kurios. And so, when the New Testament and the writers refer to Jesus as kurios, they are referring to him as almighty God from everlasting to everlasting. And our conversation went on and it, it went really well. She came back and I'll tell you about that later. But I share this story with you to emphasize the importance right now, the importance of being able to articulate our faith in a loving way and contend with others regarding the word of God and the truth of God's word and the nature and person of Jesus Christ.